Okay, so the time has come to do the top 10 heavy infantry in Third Age. And your heavy infantry really is a pretty big determining factor in looking at how good your faction is. It took a little while to sort of test my assumptions on what heavy infantry is good and for what reasons. There are some interesting factors that I will be mentioning throughout the list, but we'll start off at number 10. So at number 10 we have Dale's Dismounted Earls. Now this was a unit which I knew would be hovering around near the bottom of the list somewhere, but I didn't expect them to actually come dead last. And there are a couple of reasons for this. They are obviously a very, very good heavy infantry unit because there was a lot of competition for the top 10 in this case. It's not like the Horse Archers where there wasn't even 10 units to begin with. But the stats for the Earls are as follows. They have 9 attack, 17 defense, and 4 charge. So obviously very good in terms of defense. All the units on this list are. They cost 720 each. You can only have 1 before the cost increases, and that is significant. And as for additional stats, they have excellent morale. Every unit on this list has got excellent morale. And they have good armor. That's actually pretty light on traits. A lot, some of the units on this list have got a lot of traits, whereas the Earls have the least amount. There is also something else which counts against them in the fact that you can only give them upgraded weapons, you cannot give them upgraded armour. They're not the only unit on this list to have this, but their base stats are not high enough really that this can be counted as balanced, I'd say. I'd say giving them upgraded armour would be fine, but yeah, really what puts them down this low, at least below the next unit on the list, which I expected to place below them, is the fact that they aren't very good value for money. You can only have one. You can't really mass them up, which, you know, is a bit of a shame. They are, in terms of base cost, the cheapest unit on the list, but the fact you can only have one before it increases, it goes up to like 1,040 after you've got one, which means it's very difficult to get a lot of Earls on the field. And as Dale, you want a lot of dismounted Earls on the field, especially in a in a defensive siege situation. There's no doubt that they look really nice, but ultimately they just don't have either the numbers or the quality to get any higher than 10th on the list. So at number 9 we have Harad's Serpent Guard, and this was the unit I was expecting them to place below the Elves, but they didn't after a bit of testing, and the reason for that is not actually the stats, because they have 9 attack, 16 defense, and 4 charge. That's the same as the Elves except with one less defense. So I expected them to place lower, however they cost 730, which again, 10 florins more. Big difference is you can have 3 before the cost increases, and that makes them the most easily massable unit on the list, which is worth, it's worth some points, despite being statistically the worst. Well, kind of, anyway. They have an additional trait as well, which I believe certainly lifts them above the Earls. Just like the Earls, they have excellent morale and good armour, but in addition to that they also have good stamina, and they are fully upgradable as opposed to just being allowed upgraded weaponry. This, I believe, puts the dismounted Serpent Guard over the Earls, and the Serpent Guard are a really good unit for Harad, because for the most part, they are all about cost-effectiveness, and there is a bit of that about the Serpent Guard as well. But for the most part, when you're facing Harad, you get the feeling that your infantry will overrule theirs easily in terms of quality. There's not that sense of confidence when you face the Serpent Guard, though. They can put up a real fight, and if you're not careful, they will overwhelm you. And I like the Serpent Guard, dismounted and mounted, but the dismounted variant really gives them some much-needed muscle in the infantry engagements, I feel. And that's something worth celebrating. They, too, look pretty cool, I think. I like the, the helms, the sort of Arabic styling of them. But they aren't, in terms of quality, they aren't good enough to get any higher on the list, certainly. There are some very good quality units on the way, which the Serpent Guard just get destroyed in, in a 1v1 fight. But if you use them correctly, the Serpent Guard can really, really do some work for you as, as Harad. So, at number 8, we have Runes, Lok Flag Rim. Now, the stats on these guys are 6 attack, 17 defense, and 4 charge. And, again, they have lower stats than the Elves in that they have three less attack, and that may sound pretty severe. However, just like the Serpent Guard, they have things that more than make up for it. One thing in particular, it's not the cost though, 740 each and you can only have two before the cost increases. That's pretty much standard fare in terms of only being allowed two before the cost increases. It's still better than the Elves in that you can have two instead of one, but the traits are where it really gets good. They too have excellent morale and good armor, that's pretty standard. But the trait that they really have in their favor is that they are effective against armor with their maces and their axes. 
This means that in an elite infantry to elite infantry fight, they can do very, very well for themselves. So they can actually beat units that are higher placed on this list than they are. The only problem is their stats in general means that they are slightly less effective in like a real battle situation. You're very rarely going to get just like a 1v1 engagement which these guys can win against something like a Dwarven infantry unit. But nonetheless, it is very interesting to note that if you get into an elite infantry versus elite infantry fighters room, you've got a very, very good chance of winning it because of their effectiveness against armor. The stats being as low as they are means they can't get higher on this list. I say they're low, they're very, very good stats, but compared to some of the higher infantry on the list, they are relatively low. And of course, they can have upgraded weapons and armor as well, so you can mitigate the lower attack score by upgrading their weapons somewhat, and of course you can upgrade the armor as well, which is something they have over the Earls. And they're better, the effectiveness against armor is more important than the better stamina that the Serpent Guard have in my opinion. That effectiveness versus armor can really put room over the top. Um, Really though, again, money-wise, it is a bit of a problem seeing as room have a bit of a problem with fielding affordable units, but nonetheless, you're going to see Lok Flag Rim in pretty much any runic army, and why not? They're a very, very good unit indeed. Nice looking as well. So, at number 7, and as much as I'd like to put them higher, it is the Dismounted Swan Knights of Gondor. So, stats-wise, we have 10 attack. 19 defense and 5 charge, so this is better in terms of stats than anything we've seen so far. Also a little bit more expensive, they cost 790 each and you can have 2 before the cost increases, that's a little bit more than the runic Lok Flag Rim. They too have excellent morale and good armor, they also have good stamina, so they are essentially just better versions of the Serpent Guard in every way, a little bit more expensive but more than worth it in my opinion. As Gondor, you're going to be using these guys pretty extensively. They're very, very good heavy infantry. And from here on in, well, I guess from the Lok Flag Rim on up, like, these guys will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the higher tier units on this list. They will end up losing, but they will still inflict a great deal of damage. You could say that for any unit on this list. They, too, can have the upgraded weapons and armor. Of course, the looks, fantastic. I would suggest that if you're playing as Gondor, you need these guys in your army simply because a lot of your units are spears and they won't really be dishing out the damage, but the 10 attack on these guys is very high. One of the higher stats on this list, to be honest with you. They're not armor-piercing, sadly, but they will do an excellent job at cleaning up trash or units without breaking and withstanding arrow fire whilst cleaning up the trash. Elite infantry to elite infantry, though, they may struggle a little bit. They can just about beat out the Lok Flag Rim just but they will basically be dead after that so yeah it's worth saying that that's going to be the sort of fight where the swan knights you know it's going to be one to one basically so at number six we have the first of the dwarven trinity in the dragon slayers of ered mithrin i think i'm pronouncing that correctly so what are we looking at in terms of stats we have eight attack 20 defense and five charge so pretty similar overall to the swan knights they even cost exactly the same at 790 you can also have two before the price increases but what makes these guys better well they have a lot of traits for one they can form shield wall which is very nice it's excellent if you're a defensive player in a siege for example they are they have excellent morale excellent armor and excellent stamina as well this is where they really start to get better than the swan knights really those traits are really very very good indeed they will not tire they have better armor than the swan knights same amount of morale it must be said but nonetheless that excellent stamina and armor really does put them above the swan knights and if that wasn't enough well they're effective against armor as well they have those nice axes they have slightly lower attack and of the dwarven trinity they are the lowest on the list but nonetheless they are a nasty unit to go up against, and they are also the most aggressive-minded of the Dwarven Heavy Infantry units with that effectiveness against armor. I like these guys. I like these guys a lot. They also look nice and mean with that black armor and those helms. Nice shields, too. So, at number 5, we have the second of the Dwarven units in the Iron Guard. This is a unit which is a little bit different to the Dragon Slayers. They have... 11 attack, 23 defense, and 5 charge, so you know, there's a bit more of an emphasis on defense here, it must be said. They cost 850 each, and you can also have 2 before the price increases. They can form shield wall as well, they have excellent morale and armor, and they have good stamina, so slightly less stamina, slightly less traits. The effectiveness against armor is a bit of a big loss. They have higher base attack, which is nice, and this means they're better 
I'd say there's only one unit in the game that's better at cleaning the trash off the field. Stuff like Orc Band are going to just melt before the Iron Guard. I would suggest that there is only one unit in the game that's better at taking arrows than these guys as well. They will just not die. And that's really what places them above the Dragon Slayers. The Dragon Slayers have got some better traits, but the significantly higher stats and just the ability to keep going longer than the Dragon Slayers on the field is what places the Iron Guard above them in my opinion. The Iron Guard don't get any higher because really from here on in it's going to be all good all good news for the units above them. The Iron Guard do have the the downside of being you know maybe slightly light in terms of traits and not really having the the wild card abilities of being effective against armor to make up for that but nonetheless if you see Iron Guard you're never really going to be able to whistle them down with arrows unless they're crossbows at close range so you're just going to have to hope that you can outlast them and that's never a good thing. So number four and I've been gushing about the dwarves but the high elves have also got some very very nice heavy infantry of their own and this is one of them, the Mittelond nobles. Now stats wise we are looking at 12 attack, 22 defense and 5 charge so the same as the iron guard only they have one more attack. They cost 950 each and they have two before the cost increases so they are a significant amount high elven units always are they have excellent morale good armor and very good stamina as their additions so to speak and i think the key one here is very good stamina not tiring is really what places them above the iron guard in my opinion they are a very deadly unit if used correctly and Also they can have upgraded weapons and armor which is very very nice, of course you'll be plowing even more money into them if you do that, but boosting their stats even higher than the already insane amount that they are is always nice. One thing to keep in mind is that as with most elven units they do take a bit of a hit in terms of unit models which is, you know, it's, it's a weakness certainly. Up until now we've all had the units be around the 150 mark but actually from here on we'll be seeing some smaller units so that's interesting, but again, in terms of quality, you can't really beat the the elves at the high ends in the most part. You know, there are obviously some which can, but the Mithlon Nobles, not a unit you want to be tangling with for too long because they will start to do heavy damage to you and you won't be able to do much to them in return. So, at number three, we have the strongest offering from the Kingdoms of Men, and that is the Dismounted Dunedain Knights. Now, something to get out of the way straight away, just like the elves, you cannot upgrade these guys' armour, but... In this case it's a little bit more understandable because their base stats are so high. And they are as follows. 12 attack, 22 defense and 5 charge. So identical in terms of stats at least to the Mithlon Nobles and in terms of numbers. Again, bit of a smaller unit. 900, you can only have one before the cost increases. But really in terms of like the factions overall you're probably going to be spending about the same amount of money on your infantry. So really it, it kind of all balances out because the high elves are so expensive anyway that having one extra before the cost increases isn't too significant. You can probably afford to field, probably afford the increased cost with the Dunedain Knights a bit more. As for the traits though, again, excellent morale. The difference is though, they have very good armor and good stamina. So essentially they prioritize their armor over their stamina. And I know that I said that the stamina puts the Mithlon Nobles ahead of the Iron Guard, but in terms of a damaging unit like this, I would suggest that the very good armor helps the Dunedain Knights with their survivability a little bit and that's what puts them over the Mithlon Nobles and the Iron Guard of course. Very very strong unit indeed and really it doesn't get any better in terms of the Kingdom of Men. Stunning looking as well. But yeah really the best of the best can only defeat the Dunedain Knights. It really takes an impressive unit to bring them down 1v1. Only a couple can manage it. At number two, we have the Smiths of Eregion, of the High Elves. Now, this is the smallest unit on the list. Usually you only have 101, although chances are you probably have your general in this unit, so it will normally be 102 at least. In terms of stats, 7 attack, 23 defense, and 5 charge. You can have full upgrades if you want. You can have weapons and armor, which is very, very nice indeed. Excuse me. They do cost 980 each, and you can only have one before the price increases. Now... That's pretty steep, but again, you'll be used to that if you play as the High Elves. They are good versus armor, naturally, if you look at their weapons. Nice hammers, so 
Being effective against armor is what makes up for them having a slightly lower attack score. In terms of elite infantry to elite infantry, there is only one unit which can really stand against the Smiths of Aragian, and we have yet to see them. They have excellent morale and very good armor and stamina. Now, of course, excellent morale is not really worth mentioning because every unit in, on the list has got that, but the very good armor and stamina combination is very important. It means that despite the lower numbers, they will be able to keep going, keep dishing out that damage, and stay standing, really. Now, the lower amount of units means you are a bit more susceptible to being surrounded than any other unit, but they are the quality of the Smiths of Aragian is so good that it doesn't really matter. They get up this high on their merit. And so, at number one, we have Durin's Finest in the Guards of Khaz Doom. First thing to note, we have jumped back up to 150 men in the unit, which is always very, very nice. The stats, 7 attack. 26 defense and 5 charge. Naturally, you cannot upgrade the armor of these guys. Having 26 armor from the get-go is kind of as high as you need, to be honest. Of course, these are the best unit. This is the best unit in the game in terms of taking arrows because of that defense score. They do cost 1,000 florins each, which makes them the most expensive base cost unit in this list. That You can also only have one, so they're not exactly what you call cost efficient. Interestingly enough, though, once the cost increases, the Smiths of Aragian do become less cost-efficient, cost so you can actually mass these guys up more easily, which is interesting. As for um, little extras go, they have a shield wall, they are good versus armor, they have excellent morale and armor, and they have good stamina. Really, the thing that differentiates them from the Smiths of Aragian in those terms is they have worse stamina, but they can form shield wall which I actually prefer, because mainly even if these guys get exhausted, they're so tough to kill that they don't really die anyway. And also, the significant amount more men in the unit make a big difference as well. So, yeah, really the best heavy infantry unit in the game for me. None of the other heavy infantry units really come close to matching these guys in terms of their quality and overall effectiveness. It's their nightmares. And also, the dwarves have also got something else to them, which I... You know, it does apply to the other two Dwarven units as well. But these guys in particular, because of their mass, they have a tendency of just forcing their way through enemy positions. Which again, like, it's infuriating when you're playing against the Dwarves. You've got a nice defensive position and the Dwarves just come up and flatten it. And these guys really are the centerpiece of the Dwarves. It's what makes them so good. And yeah, the Guards of Khazad Doom are worthy winner of this list. Of this most important of lists as well. So there we have it for the heavy infantry list. I hope you enjoyed, and I don't really know what I'm going to do next with regards to these. I suppose I could do the top 10 bodyguard units, but I'm not sure if it's an extensive enough list. I suppose it's no different to the horse archers, so I might very well do the bodyguards, but after the bodyguards, I'm not really sure where to go with this next. I think I've really done the top 10 units thing as far as I can in third age, so... We'll see. I'm open to suggestions if anyone's got them, but we'll see. And thank you for watching.